week of the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Tuesday, June 11th. Okay, so we have a little bit of a day on our hands, meaning that there are some very positive qualities really helping us to break free of this negative mindset, this negative funk that we've been in. Of course, a lot of that is because we're in Gemini season. We just had this new moon in Gemini that really illuminated some extremes, some extremes in our emotions, in our headspace, in our ideas, our options, our opportunities, our path, our directions. Everything is very divisive in this Gemini energy. Coming out of the new moon, if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, if you've listened to the Ascension forecast for this week, especially, you would know that coming out of that new moon, we were sitting in the funk, sitting in the darkness. We're building towards this first quarter moon in Virgo energy popping off here on the 14th. However, we're not there yet. And so this is the day that is going to be a little bit of a growing pain in a certain respect. We have some positive aspects pulling us out of the darkness, out of the funk. However, there's a major aspect taking place here today between Mars and Pluto that is going to be the breakdown before the breakthrough type of energy. And so I'm preparing you for this because there is going to be some seesaw effect. And of course, we've been doing the seesaw, the up and down, the back and forth in this Gemini energy. But I'm just kind of giving you the lay of the land to know that there is going to be a heaviness. There is going to be a weight. There's going to be some discomfort really popping up in our inner realms and manifesting in our physical realms in order to act as the trigger, as the activation for us to see things differently. So I just want to prepare you for that. Now, the moon is still in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the zodiac. So that's working for us. It's given us boldness and bravery and courage to kind of boss up, to really stand out, if you will, to be our unique individual selves and align with our heart space and tap into new creative force energies and really just bring this new version of self, the authenticity of this new version of self, soul, and spirit out to play. But we are going to see the moon go void, of course, at 3.17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But we're not locking into the Virgo energy until 1.39 a.m. Wednesday morning. So it is going to be a huge chunk of time that things are a little bit shaky, a little bit unstable and uncertain. And again, playing into the whole breakdown before the breakthrough type of vibe. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so with that being said, there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. So with all of that being said, we are going to kick the day off with a little bit of tension. Now, the tension point is coming between Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we're expressing ourselves in his rulership in this Gemini energy. We have Mercury semi-squaring, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. And of course, Mars just shifted into this Taurus energy that for the most part has been a very low, slow, steady pace to get used to. Everything's a little bit heavy, a little bit slower, a little bit more weighted than it was just a couple of days ago when Mars was in his rulership. So Mercury kind of, you know, creating this tension point with Mars. A lot of this is because Mercury and Gemini energy is kind of rapidly processing different situations and circumstances, different scenarios, different variables, different options, path, directions that we obviously want to make a decision point upon so that we can start actively making moves to actually move in a new path, move in a new direction. Mars, on the other hand, would prefer to kind of pick up the pace, but now in Taurus energy, we're not moving. We're not budging. It's a fixed earth energy. We have to stand still. We have to appreciate the pause for a second until we kind of get our bearings, get the lay of the land, so to speak. We want to ground and anchor into this present moment while we have a lot of pressure really being applied to our headspace. There's a lot going on in our internal realm. And therefore, this pause energy is preventing us from taking action and making moves too quickly upon some of the information, ideas, and options that, of course, we've been processing and trying to sort through. So ants in our pants, yes. Frustration, sure. Agitation, 100%. We are very limited on patience. And again, because we're kind of in this earth energy now with Mars being in Taurus, 
we really need to stabilize before we go ahead, take any action, make any kind of move. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Gemini energy, going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. So a sextile is a beautiful interaction. It's a gentle nudge in the right direction. This particular interaction is kind of warming us up a tad, putting us in a different perspective. We are more open to kind of, I'm going to say, learning about ourselves through the interactions of some of the tension points and frictions and activations that have been thrown in our face. We are really kind of getting down to the nitty gritty of what it is that we want, not only for ourselves, but where relationship dynamics are concerned as well. We are really addressing our fears, our doubts, our insecurities in a different way. We're not kind of backing away and putting our guard up like we have over the last couple of days. Instead, we're looking to kind of bring that wall down and really identify why we put it up in the first place. There are new wants, new needs, new desires that are coming to the surface of our awareness. And we've been doing a great job of trying to kind of turn a blind eye to that because of course, the minute that you realize that you want something more, something better than what it is that you have, suddenly we we are very fearful of what we have to do to actually improve our situation. Now, a lot of this, because Venus is involved, has a lot to do with relationship dynamics and finances being kind of thrown in that realm of conversation. And so because we're kind of all operating in different parts of self and fragmented from the wholeness that we need to be operating in, again, the Gemini energy further divides. But this particular energy is a good one. It's opening us up to having conversations, to kind of sharing our rawness, our vulnerabilities. It is putting us in a situation to understand that in order for us to kind of reconcile or rectify what it is that we've been going through, we have to be a little bit more open with our emotions, with our affections, with our wants, with our needs, with our desires. Mercury is then going to get into an awkward situation with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who of course is retrograde in this Aquarius energy. This is really going to apply even more intensity on the mental plane, but for good reason. This is putting us in a situation to be the detective. Now we have to dig. We have to dig in our psyche, in our egoic programming to see why it is that we feel the way that we feel, why we are thinking the way that we're thinking. This is a beautiful beautiful interaction to unearth some hidden details of how it is that we actually feel, how it is that we actually see the world around us. Now, is it going to feel good? Probably not. Is it supposed to? 100% no. But this is an opportunity to kind of, again, dissect our inner dialogue, our inner narrative, really understand where the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, the vulnerabilities are stemming from. And again, spoiler alert, early childhood behavior situations, environment, and where it is that now, because of us being able to act as the observer and kind of observe where it is that these patterns, these inner narratives and dialogues are still kind of popping up and derailing us from what it is that we actually want to do. This is going to be an aha moment and epiphany that changes us for the better. This is going to give us more power and control over our perspective, over our options, over our understanding, and really put us in a situation to see what needs to stay, what needs to go. The moon in Leo energy going to make a very tough interaction with Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles and responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. And of course, he is in Pisces energy. This is a harsh aspect for us. We're getting a little bit of a reality check. We're understanding that, yeah, we have we might have a passion, a desire to actually move forward. We might actually see where we're motivated, where we're inspired to do different things, to take action, to make moves. However, Saturn brings restriction. He's blocking us. We don't want to go out in the world and take action and make moves willy nilly. We have to understand that a firm, solid foundation within ourselves needs to be built first and foremost in order for us to be able to kind of withstand some of the challenges, obstacles that are going to be thrown our way when we pivot, when we try to build in a new path, in a new direction. And so this is, again, we're, we're going to feel the heaviness, the heart activation, if you will, because one part of us is kind of ready to break free, 
The other part of us just wants to kind of stay in this present moment and really, again, take a lot more time to decipher what needs to stay, what needs to go. The moon is then going to sextile the sun. So this is a beautiful interaction kind of bringing us out of those funkier energies. There's always a new emotional awareness that comes out of the moon and the sun coming together in any kind of way. Um, a sextile, again, is an opportunity for growth, for expansion, especially in realizing what it is that our heart and our soul wants us to do, wants us to pursue from here. Yes, there are options to choose from. Yes, those options are very extreme, very polarized. The sun shining a bright light in the Gemini energy is the division that we're currently experiencing within us when trying to sort through, again, what it is that we want to kind of close the door upon and what it is that we want to open the door to. So this is going to kind of give us a different perspective, give us a an alignment, if you will, between our heart and our head, understanding where it is that our heart wants us to advance to move forward, to be bold and brave and courageous, to declare what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire. The sun, again, shining a bright light on the Gemini energy has us kind of doing a dance between, well, I do want this particular situation, circumstance and scenario, but I also want this and I can't have both. So this is finding the sweet spot, the compromise, if you will, in between the extreme options and opportunities that we're currently trying to choose between. 9 15 a.m eastern standard time this is where things are going to get a little bit bumpy mars the god of war ruling over our physical energy our drive our passion our desires now in this taurus energy is going to get in the boxing ring square off with pluto the great transformer himself who was retrograde in this aquarius energy first of all earth and air they're the furthest elements that we have and therefore, there's not a whole lot of likeness, similarities, commonalities. There's a lot of friction, a lot of tension, because, of course, the Earth energy is the physical realm it's doing versus the air energy of Aquarius energy is thinking. And thinking and doing should go hand in hand, but oftentimes we get too caught up in the mental plane. We overthink things, therefore, keep ourselves in a state of paralysis, not so much on the doing side of things. Anywho, we have the God of War, the god of the underworld coming together in the boxing ring. The boxing ring, the square, is a tension point. It's a conflict point. It's a growing pain point, and growing pains never feel good. So first of all, this particular energy is going to trigger a very strong desire, let's call it, to have control. OK, so right now we're not feeling so in control of our lives. We're not feeling in control of circumstances and events. This is going to push us into the deep end. Maybe you want a little bit more control over your mental plane so that you're not being such a negative Nancy. Maybe you want a little bit more control over your emotions so that you're not constantly on a roller coaster. Maybe you want control over a relationship dynamic or a certain circumstance that has you frustrated as all hell banging your head against a wall. Either way, there is an attempt for us to gain control, for us to be in a placement of power, for us to manipulate, if you will, other people or the situation or circumstance in our favor. Now, this is going to show us where it is that there is some frustration and being activated here, anger being activated, and we have to use those tougher emotions as a guide, as a tool to see where it is that we're not feeling in power at all. And so whatever it is that we're realizing that we have a want, need or desire for, we're also realizing that we're not going to be satisfied in that realm of desire for a very long time. Again, patience is not a virtue that many of us were actually born with. This is a restless energy. It's a frustrating energy. It is like banging your head against a wall and tired of having your head hurting, but yet can't stop because again, we just want to break free of this current circumstance. This is an opportunity for growth, believe it or not. We have to have a breakdown before we can have a breakthrough. So whether it is anger or fear or frustration or agitation that we've kind of, you know, buried down deep within us is coming to the surface. Whether we want it to or not is coming to the surface. Now, whether we learn from it or not, that is a choice that we all have. It does not feel good to be in a conflict. It does not feel good to be thrown into confrontation. It does not feel good to not feel good. 
However, that is where we grow. That is where we change. That is where we transform. So if nothing else, we're realizing what it is that we actually want through realizing what it is that we don't want. And again, Gemini energy, you have, you likely have two options, either continue doing what it is that you've been doing and settle for what it is that you've already got, or do something different and see what kind of different result you can create out of doing things in a different way. And then of course you can break that down and say, okay, well, I don't want to do this. I want different. What does that different mean? Well, maybe it means that you have to wake up in a different way. Maybe it means that you need better routines for your health and wellness. Maybe it means that you need to approach your relationship dynamics in a different way. Maybe you need a different job. Maybe it's the smaller little things that you could change and alter in the run of your day that would actually make the biggest change of all. Either way, it's up to you whether or not you want to learn from this tension or whether you want to sit in it, complain about it, and let it suck the life force energy out of you. The moon is then going to try and Chiron. This is the attempt to get us out of this friction, to kind of smooth things over, if you will, to grow, to heal, to repair ourselves by the awareness that we're now having on where it is that we're frustrated is all F. Okay, so the moon, emotionally speaking, is putting us in a situation where we are learning what we could do differently, where we could grow, where we could try things in a different way in order to get a different result. Again, this is our attempt to kind of dig ourselves out of the dark pit that we fell in with this Mars and Pluto transit. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Gemini energy, which obviously is suggesting that we are choosing, deciding our new wants, needs, and desires deserve a different method, a different version of ourselves. This is giving us a glimmer of clarity on what it is that we could do differently, especially in our relationship dynamics. Maybe, again, Gemini energy approaching the conversation or argument or confrontation or conflict differently, that we can actually resolve some of the issues that are popping up in our physical realm. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune in its place of power in Pisces energy. We love this because this is kind of, I'm going to say, soothing our soul. It's reminding us that the ego has the problem, not the higher self. It is putting us in a situation to tap into new creative force energy to come up with solutions to some of the problems that we are very aware of after that particular square off between Mars and Pluto. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring and square off with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. This is going to be the last aspect that the moon is going to make before going void, of course. And so a square never feels good. And of course, the heart space being triggered and activated because of the Leo energy doesn't feel good either. But Uranus is here to kind of create a state of confusion, to make you feel trapped, to make you kind of feel like you are never going to escape the situations and circumstances that you're currently wanting to kind of get out of. We have to have this tension point. We have to sometimes trick ourselves into thinking that we have no options and no opportunities in order for us to kind of hulk out and boss up to a new level of confidence and power and control within ourselves to say, you know what? Okay, I'm ready to make the changes if it means that I don't have to sit in this situation, circumstance, and scenario any longer. Again, the breakdown is very much needed before the breakthrough could ever even take place. 3.17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going void, of course. 9.30 p.m., the last aspect of the day is the moon in Leo, again, void, uh, making a very awkward interaction with the North Node in Aries energy, which is trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, our soul's potential. So this awkward interaction is kind of us coming out of those squares, coming out of that frustration, out of feeling trapped, and kind of thinking about the possibilities, the options for us to do things differently, to choose differently, to take a different path, to take a different direction. Now, are we going to gain clarity from that? Probably not at this state. However, we will over the next couple of days as we approach that first quarter moon in this Virgo energy, which is an action and decision point. But all of these tougher energies and aspects, these uncomfortable energies are meant to put us in a situation where we're more willing to make the changes that we weren't willing to make just a couple of days ago.